Hey guys, it's Justin Schwartz here with the Schwartz team. Just want to introduce myself here and get you ready for the market update. Today we're looking back at some February stats. Keep in mind, we're always looking back about 35, 45 days to fig figure out what was closed. And then we're getting those processed and uh, trying to figure out exactly what to make sense of them. So, um, dip, dipping into these stats, here we are. Average sales price, that's always a fun one for everybody to know is what's the average sales price on a property sold in southeastern Minnesota. So we are doing the stats for southeastern Minnesota. This is going to be kind of a conglomerate of our whole region. So that's the breakdown on these stats. We can get it more narrowed down if you'd like more, more narrowed down. Um, average sales price, 236000 That is up 13.4% from last year. And uh, keep in mind, last year at this time, everything that I'm going to be mentioning, the thing to keep in mind with this is we had a lot of snow. I was looking at some of our, uh, our reminders from social media that showed you one year ago today. And it, it wasn't very long ago that there was a post that showed me deer bedding down in my backyard in about a foot and a half of snow. So it's all relative to the deer didn't want to go anywhere, neither did we. So keep that in mind as we look through some of these stats. There, there was a bit of a weather disadvantage for some of last year, and uh, we were excited to get out of that weather too. So beyond average sales price, next thing, the big indicator for me that I, I always look at month supply. Um, we're getting low on month supply right now. We've got a 1.9 month supply. That basically means if no more properties hit the market in 1.9 months, we are out of houses. It's not a healthy amount. That ends up becoming a, a more of a seller's market. Typically speaking, the lower that number gets, the more the sellers are in control. Last year, at this time, it was 2. Point, or it was 2.3. So that's the difference there. Not not huge, but it's going the going the wrong direction. I'd like to see there be a little bit more inventory that would level out the field and make it a little bit more fair for everyone. If you're a seller, you probably love that though. So keep that in mind. Um, average days on market, it's up 16.2%. We're at 79 days on the market. And uh, I don't want to overthink that, but basically I think with the some of the properties that are maybe a little bit higher end, and there are some that have just been sitting on the market for a long time, those may be bogging us down a little bit on that, but ultimately you don't overthink that. When there's a good property, it sells pretty quickly, and that has not changed even in this market with everything going on with... Uh, Corona talk and everything, uh, properties are still selling in a day. So keep that in mind. Um, we got to still be moving fast. There is probably a little bit more, a um, little bit more room on some properties. There's a little bit of a delay. Overall, I would say we've been seeing, like, as of real time right now, showings. That's how we'll have to measure this because I can't tell you what's closed. But showings, we've seen about a, a drop of about a third. And listings appear to be about similar where we're about a third less on listings so overall I'd say we're down about a third and compared to the nation we've been outperforming um, most of the nation Minnesota Nebraska and New Hampshire um, are basically just down about 30 percent probably going up as we get closer into our our uh, most affected time here as far as that coronavirus and you know infections and all that good stuff but Right now we are in one of the more lucky areas where in real estate things seem to still be moving. So let's move on to the next one. Um, the list to sale ratio here is if I list a house today for 100, what's it gonna sell for? It's 95.4%. So if you listed a house today, you're probably gonna average 95.4 from your list price there. Um, new listings. We are up 15%. We've got 15% more listings. We are at 452. Active listings, we are down 14.8%. We are at 1,017 listings right now. Um, as far as pending properties under contract, this one's kind of interesting. Um, it's, it's a big number. We are at 450 this year, which is up 36.4% from last year at this time. And I think that has to do with the weather. Pending is more of a what was going on right at that time. And we had 330 at this time last year. So Closed sales, um, closed are up 15.4%. We were at 323 listings closed. And what do I expect for the up and coming here? Um, right now, we're, we're all trying to adjust to what the new normal is for a little while. 
until we get back to whatever the next normal is. So right now, being down about a third, we're definitely seeing a change in the behaviors of buyers, the behavior of sellers. They're leaning on us a lot to say, what should I do? And I, I think it all depends on your own pulse. If you don't have to move, there's no pressure. But if you have to move, I think you strongly got to consider of what strategy do we need to do at this point. And uh, we can go ahead and get you some ideas to, to better strategize for this market. How can we get you ready to go? And likewise, as buyers, um, make sure you're ready to go on this market too. These interest rates, um, they're still great. I think they're going to be great for a long time. But that's the thing that I think we're seeing with a strong market is rates were getting good before all this came and that generally empowers our buyers where they have a little bit more buying power. And I think you want to take advantage of that. If a house costs less per month to live in, that generally speaking uh, is, is going to be relative to what prices are going to do. When interest rates drop, generally home prices increase. That's just general speaking. But um, yeah, overall, the market still seems like it's looking good. For these last stats here, I, I'm not going to be uh, ignorant and say that it's going to be peachy and all rosy for the next few weeks here. I think we've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of work ahead of us to figure out how it's all going to be affected. But obviously, I think the stats are going to be down when we're going to be looking at April. I think that that will probably reflect a lot of them. So we'll go ahead and keep you updated when those stats come out and show you where we are and be real transparent. But if you guys got questions about where the market is right now and you'd like to uh, position yourself for uh, some of the opportunities, right now there are some people that are, are a little bit more desperate. But overall, I want to advise you sellers, let's weather the storm. I think we're going to be fine coming out of this. There are some bottom feeders out there looking to take advantage of the people that are worried. Overall, this will too pass. But I think we got to be understanding of it's it's a season of time here you don't need to panic one way or the other we'll get through it and it's just position yourself how how do i make the best of where we're at and how do i function through this how do i know the the strategic ways of getting my loan making sure my job is secure and all these other things that we need to think of in advance we don't want to find out at the closing table that i got laid off or my buyer got laid off now what do we do um, we're trying to cross all those paths in advance and likewise the banks are looking at differently too So there's a lot of little different strategies that we're looking at and we're trying to get ahead of the curve on those kind of things If we're going to keep talking about the curve and bending and all that stuff Then you might as well get ahead of it in real estate too But I, uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys and I hope you found some of this information helpful And until next time you have a good one